the Scottsdale Artist School. I'm Jerry Salinas, your host today. We're interviewing a wonderful Northern California artist, and he's a wonderful artist wherever you might go. Uh, his name is Tim Horn, and he's here te this week teaching a workshop. He's got a wonderful class, and once again, social distancing, they're wearing masks. We're social distance right now, so our masks are down, and my wife shall be happy again that we're social distancing. I'll, I'll tell you later, but uh, here's Tim. And we're going to look at some of his paintings. The man's a master of light. I love his brush strokes. I love the way he explains light. I love his subject matter. And I think a lot of people do because as I talk to some of his students and they just enjoy his work. And he's good. this guy's got a great eye. And uh, we'll talk about his, his past as a graphic designer. And uh, here's Tim. Welcome, Tim. Hello. Thank you. Well, Tim's here this week. He's got his workshop. And I thought it was a great opportunity to talk to him. And the first painting we have, I, do you have the name up? Uh, I don't even know what the name It may not even have a name. I don't know. And you said this is near your home? Yeah. So as soon as the pandemic hit and we were told not to leave the house except under, you know, for, for necessity, I stopped doing studio work and I started just doing plein air stuff around where I lived. And it was great, felt great to go out on a country road and do some painting and have nobody around. Um, but I started walking downtown from my house and just doing some random paintings behind the storefronts on Main Street. So I think I did probably eight paintings down there. And some of them were single sessions and others were two sessions. This was a two session painting. Um, so, so to do a suit two session painting, you went down there at the same time, exact same time within three days, usually within three days. And that these cars are there all the time. So, and I knew that in advance, so that wasn't wasn't a problem. I, I loved how you masked in the shadow shapes. That's fantastic. And that's thinner paint. Do you, go, you use a medium at all? Uh, yeah, but I don't use a medium in the shadows. Usually, I start with the dark shadow colors and I use thinner for that and scrub those in and then when I transition into the light areas then I'll start to use a medium. And, and this is on linen? Um, this might be gesso board yes. or canvas panel. I, I use a variety of substrates. What size do you usually do your plein air paintings with? They're anywhere from 8 by 10 to 11 by 14, usually fairly small. And the reason is just to get them done quickly because of the short time you have? or Yeah, basically. And they're just generally kind of studies. And a lot of my planner work, I don't, I don't expect to sell it. It's more just kind of exercise mm -hmm. for me. So I don't want to invest a huge amount of time. Right. But, um, Will you use these studies for more finished paintings? Not these. I mean, part of the reason I was doing these is since all during the pandemic, all of my shows and deadlines and workshops were all canceled. Right. So I didn't have a list of paintings that I was trying to do. So that kind of gave me the freedom to just go out and just do random stuff that I didn't wasn't planning to sell. I didn't have to send it anywhere. And so that's why I did the backside of downtown. These are not picture perfect representations of Fairfax mm -hmm. there the backside so I wasn't intending to sell any of these and so that that was very liberating to have that you know so you like these off off the beaten path type views because I think I did see something online where you were doing like the end of, ends of towns or something and uh, yeah you know, yeah I do like like that kind yeah. of stuff you know it seems like you like to get away, get away from what other people like to paint which is yeah. nice yeah yeah it's great because it shows a great eye. I mean, look at this, that strong vertical there. Yeah. But you got all this horizontal going across there. Some nice blues. Look at these wonderful edges. Look at the, look at the globby brush stroke right there. I don't know if you call it globby, but I love it. <laughs> How that negative shape brings out that tree. We love looking at artwork. And remember, what's the name of our show? It's just about the artwork. <laughs> Sorry, Tim. That's all right. <laughs> All right. All right, we'll go to another painting. Uh, Tim gave me some paintings to look at. Are some of these going to be a little more finished than others? or Maybe. Maybe. Because I do see a difference in these two, even yeah, if they're well, close in subject matter. I think part of it is what I'm painting on. This, I think, is on oil paper, the Royal Talons okay. oil paper. And this I did before, the one you had just shown. 
um, and this is a little bit smaller. I think this is six by 12. The other one was eight by 16. Oh, okay. But it's the same building, but different time of day. This was earlier. The other one was right. a little bit later. D same three cars. <laughs> Oh, and they never moved. They never moved. Did, do you have to uh, mount the paper or tape it down? Or no, it? it comes in a block, like yeah. watercolor paper. Oh, really? yeah, okay. So I just tape it off, and then I put the whole pad onto my easel. Oh, okay. Just like a canvas or something. So from the different days, we'll go back and forth. From the different days, you can see it's different light. So there's different colors. Yeah. I think that's kind of neat. But it's 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 amazing how different times of the day through your observation, you see different colors underneath that roof or on the side of that building, and from that other day it kind of flattens out and there's yeah. less colors and it yeah. looks a little more grayer type colors, which yeah. is kind of neat. Yeah. I mean, when, when you look at paintings like this, do you even look at that or are you thinking, okay? Um, well, I, I've never looked at the two side by side uh, like this, and it is really interesting to me to see how that that surface mm -hmm. does make such a difference in the two. Now, if you were to, would you frame this, or is this just something kept as a, a study? And um, I wasn't study? planning to uh, frame it. I ended up, I posted it on Instagram, and somebody wanted it. So, well, it tells a nice story. Everybody <laughs> drives past something like. Yeah. But it's never this picturesque or pretty or the colors are there. And then you're seeing beauty in something that people just zoom by all the time. Right. And that, nice. that's a common comment that I get. A lot yeah. Of times. Which is great. Yeah, it's good to see. I did see it on your Instagram. What's your Instagram page? Tim Horn Art. We'll have a link on, on uh, the screen for that. But uh, you'll see that some, some very famous people have bought his painting. So, you know. Oh, right. <laughs> <laughs> and then if you go to the next one, it's the same yellow building but a different view. This one? So yeah, so this one I did actually before the other two. This is smaller, okay. this is six by eight, and this is on a gesso board panel, I think. And um, a little bit earlier in the day, earlier in the summer. And you see up here, there's some scratchy stuff. Mm -hmm. So the day before I had gone to the beach to paint and my easel blew over. And so there was some sand mm -hmm. in my bag. And when I went to get the palette knife, and pulled off some paint on my my palette and put it on the easel. Some of that sand was in there, so it gave me this scratchy stuff. But I, I kind of like it, right, so I left right. it. Oh, well, that's great. But yeah, I don't often use a palette knife, but um, occasionally I, I like the random uncontrolled marks that it that it puts on the paint. Are you using mostly bristle brushes, or yeah, does it hog depend hair. on the surface? No, almost everything is hog's hair wow. bristle. What are you sponsored by anybody? Hey, tell me. Uh, yeah, but not for brushes. Not for brushes? Um, I'm a, an art ambassador for Royal Talons, and they're the maker of um, Rembrandt paints. That's great paint. I love it. That's fantastic. And what size is this one? Six by eight. Six by eight. Wow, that's a lot for that little painting. Who did you study with? I mean, because you were a graphic designer. Yeah. Like for years and then yeah, well, I went to art school, but I, I studied graphic design. Right. I did that for 20 years or so. And then I just took a painting class on a whim and um, very early on I found this great teacher Stanley Goldstein and so I studied with him once a week for about a year just plein air so I painted outside for two years before I painted for my first photograph because when I look at your paintings I see light you know like you throw the story around but I also see that with Stanley's work mm -hmm. you know, he paints a lot of light you know yeah. is there something you remember that he really taught you about light that well, still sticks with you today? Not really about light. That you know, I feel like that wasn't the focus of yeah. the workshops. When I first started painting, I knew absolutely nothing about seeing and mixing color, and so Stan was great mm -hmm. helping me with that. How to see something and, and figure out what value it is and what color and temperature. So he really, really got me headed in the right direction. But after I worked with him for a while, then that's when I started to kind of veer toward focusing on the light and getting that California intensity. So you got the technique down and then you can interpret it. Yeah, much. yeah. yeah. That's a good way to that's sweet. sweet. Yeah. <laughs> I love this painting. Now one thing you'll see in his, uh, his paintings are you see a lot of vehicles, especially trucks. You do. In yeah. shadows. <laughs> <laughs> in beautiful temperatures. <laughs> There's another truck. So that's my truck. Mm -hmm. And um, I... I was, so this is up in Sonoma County. It's probably uh, 40 minutes from my house. And so there's a barn over to the right. And I went there one day planning to paint that barn. 
and I walked around my viewfinder, my sketchbook, trying to figure out the composition. And I wasn't excited about it, but I went ahead and set up my easel. And then I, before I started painting, I snapped a few photos of the setting because I was going to put it on Instagram and I wanted to give some context. And when I looked at my truck, I thought, oh, that's a great composition. So I moved my easel and I painted my truck. And I was really happy with how it came out. It just feels really loose and fresh and it just feels like it, it captured that that time of the day. Yeah, there's just so much color. I mean, warm light, you got the warm light cold shadows that people are taught, yeah. you know, you can see from there. Uh, your eye leads this way and it's not just the arrow that's doing it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but you know, I just love it. Everything's pointing that way yeah. as it moves you through the composition. I love how this stops you right here by the vehicle. Was that there or? What, the pole? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay, exactly. the only reason because the other painting had a pole, and I'm like, yeah. is that one of Tim's secret devices well, that he There's used? a lot of holes, and I actually considered taking that one out. Really? Because I, I already had a vertical with the tree, mm -hmm. so I thought I didn't need it, but it um, didn't bother me, so I left it. The reds in there, and the shadows, just to warm it up a little bit because of the grass. Lights bouncing around. That's fantastic. And, and I like one thing I like about plein air painting mm -hmm. is my paintings are much looser when right. I paint outside, and so this one in particular especially up in the tree, just has a, a looseness that I, that I could never get in the studio. See how you made the sky hose a little bit darker than the sky, guys? Mm -hmm. this one, little... Yeah, I was just telling my students yesterday how I looked at my sky holes from 15 years ago, and they are way too light. <laughs> and so I, that's something I slowly <laughs> learned and figured it's out. Even the way this, this back grass here goes from the green to the yellow, I mean, there might be different crops, but I just love how it leads to the eye. Yeah. That's fantastic. And then this little shape over here, it was actually further out. You can if you can imagine that this, if this were an actual road, it's a little narrow. Mm -hmm. So it, it was much wider, but I wanted that shape in there to help right. lead you Beautiful. down that path. Yeah, you, you know, your shadows really do it for me. You know what I also do it for me is, uh, I'm not sure if you, did you put on some finished paintings on this? Well, look, they're all finished. Well, right? I mean, like I'm, I'm the done. bigger, there's some bigger finished paintings, um, but you have like uh, the arrows or the stop, the word stop. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I love when he does that because it's simplified. And I'm like, wow, that's leading your eye around this painting so well, or it's a yeah. nice break. You know, uh, it's a little bunted in the painting. Wait, what is the title of this one? Do you have a title? I, th I think it's Left at the Tree or left something. Tree. I'm not, I'm not. And this was one sitting? Or one, yeah, uh, it was one sitting. And I, um, I took it home in the studio, and I start. I did. I was gonna tighten up the the sign, uh -huh. and I put one stroke on it, and it totally changed the character. And I wiped it off and said, "Nope, I'm You're leaving done. it. I'm done." Uh, do you, did you do a uh, a value study before? I did a little pencil sketch. Pencil I almost sketch. always do a. a How long does that take? Sketch. The pencil sketch, yeah. ten to twelve minutes. Ten to twelve, a quick sketch. Yeah, because I did see some online. They're really nice. The pencil sketches. You know, yeah. Throw them on there. Yeah, you, when I'm, it doesn't matter if I'm working from photos or from life. I you like to do pencil a sketch. pencil sketch first. Yeah, and when you did do the pencil sketch for this one, did you add that in? I'm pretty sure it was in there. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So you moved it over to get you kind of that little warmth yeah. right there in that crack. And I think I may have invented this distant hill. Oh yeah. Because it just was it sloping right. off, and right. uh, so that was a little bookend to keep you on the transparency of the back window but it's cool yeah, yep. yeah. oh that's so sweet i wish i painted that i'm <laughs> jealous i love this too so this is um still in the last six months or so all, almost all my work has been plein air so this is in my backyard i bought that chair 20 years ago just to paint it because i <laughs> love that color i'm a little obsessed with that color and this is our pear tree and and uh so it was in the fall it's probably September, I think, and maybe October. And uh, so I just set up the tree and I have chickens, five chickens that roam around and I was planning to put them in there. Right. But once I blocked it all in, I didn't feel the need for the chickens at all. I really yeah. like, really like what's happening with the shadow, how it's offset between the chair and the grass and just the minimal amount of color in the leaves on the, on the tree. So I did this in two sessions. This is a little bit bigger. I think it's 16 inches square. Um, 
Now, uh, you're also doing a series of paintings where your shadow appears, right? Yes. Someone like a self-portrait. Was this yeah. a first, or is this just one of many? No, this is the most recent. Uh, I call it series, my shadow selfies. So most of them have been on uh, old vehicles, mm -hmm. brightly colored right. Volkswagen vans and things. So this one I was, I have taken probably a hundred photos of my shadow being cast on my chickens as mm -hmm. they're roaming around, but I haven't painted that yet. And they're of course moving, so I thought the chair is gonna stay there and I could do that from life rather than working from a photo. We try to try to squeeze out a free lesson from Tim. Can you talk <laughs> about this green, this intense green that's around the shadow and why that happens? So oftentimes when you have a cast shadow, there's a transition between the light and the shadow. Um, and it's it's a value, you know, it's a soft edge. Sometimes you can see another color there, a completely different color. Um, but often I'll, I'll just introduce another value, an in-between value to soften that edge. And it, if you can introduce another color, it makes it a little more vibrancy. More interesting, and right. Kind of zings it. Yeah. Uh, what I love about this painting is see the warmth and the light, but you have some coolness here and cute coolness there that frames this painting. Mm -hmm. And then this holds your eye that way. Are you familiar with the illustrator Bernie Fuchs? Yes. Yeah, this has yes. that feel to it when I look at it, you know. Do you think about values? Like I got to have three values in every painting or four values or I you don't. just, because being having a graphic design background, it kind of, you kind of trained your eye because you guys are so good at like, was that kerning and thing I noticed? Oh, yeah. yeah. And I get, I was like, I'm done. I'm going to go be an illustrator, yeah. you know? Um, and you guys are really good at seeing things and designs. I mean, how, how has that helped you having a, a well, graphic design background? Well, I think it, background? I think the way it helped me, it was as a, working as a graphic designer, um, I was faced with that eight and a half, 11 page right. every single day, trying to design a letterhead or a brochure or a catalog or whatever. And it's that same shape basically most of the time and you're just moving images and type around until you get a pleasing image or composition and so when i first started painting i knew nothing about color or value but i felt totally confident in in making a composition and it wasn't any through any formal teaching or or based on traditional composition in landscape painting but it was just my comfort of, of or instinct of knowing where to put shapes and until they made a pleasing arrangement. How many times have you painted that chair? Ooh, a lot. A lot. Probably 15 or so. Mm -hmm. I, after I did this one, I was so excited that I, I immediately went on Amazon to see if I could get another color. <laughs> so I found a, a really a nice green one that's the same value, but I thought that would be interesting to get two chairs in there and have my shadow go from one to the next. Oh, that's kind of neat. But I haven't, didn't wanna. Is, uh, how many ca colors do you have in your palette to use for your palette? About 10, About 10. I think. So you yeah. always stick to the 10. I have a f like five guest colors, special guest colors, but yeah, basically the 10. I don't have any earth tones on my palette. That's nice. the one yeah. unusual thing. You just mix your browns and yourself. And yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. That's probably the best way to go. The other, another unusual thing about this painting is I painted it from life, and so usually uh, when I'm painting outside, I have my umbrella set up to keep the sun off my canvas. Right. But you can see if I had put the umbrella up in this, that would be a whole big shape that would cover my head and the and the easel. So I didn't put that up. But then, so there was intense light on my canvas. And usually when that, when you paint like that, when you're finished, you take it inside and it dead. It's, mm -hmm. it's too dark. Right, right. So to counterbalance that, I wore my sunglasses oh, when I did this oh, painting, thinking sorry. that if I darkened what I was looking at, I'd artificially lighten it. So when I went inside, it would look about right and it, it seemed to work okay but that was the first time i've ever painted it's like you turned a filter on photoshop sunglasses. <laughs> right <laughs> sunglass filter and this is so pleasing i mean you got the chair is right in the center but there's enough things misbalancing yeah. it you know and yeah uh, it moves the eye around it it felt like uh just the perfect the perfect size canvas and mm -hmm. the perfect setup for everything I, I was very happy with that one i love it i'll go to the next here Yes, a truck. So this is another one, downtown Fairfax. The other three that we looked at were just off to the right. 
So this truck belongs to a friend of mine down the street and uh, he let me take it this day. And so I, I specifically parked it with the tail tailgate in sun in front of that dark doorway because that was planned to be my focal point. This is, you know, a lot of my stuff is not planned or, or you know, I can't manipulate the things, but in this case, I could put the truck wherever I wanted it. Um, and I intentionally, chopped off the front of the truck just to de-emphasize that and make it not not so special i'm really happy with the value pattern in this how the truck and the building are all in shadow but you've got these little uh, sharp triangles of light in there and i think having the tailgate as a focal point is kind of an unusual subject of a painting uh, and I like the variety of colors that I got over in the in the wall and the vertical that takes you up and breaks up breaks up the the sky shape. Yeah, it's just the triangles in this are just I don't know if you see them all, but you got this one here, you got this one, and this one. But I like kind of this visual triangle that's coming out of these poles coming mm -hmm. this way towards towards the tailgate because you said it's this the, yep. the main thing of the subject, you know. And I painted this from life, mm -hmm. and uh, I was set up in the Bank of America parking lot. So I had to go into the bank first and stand in line and then ask permission if I could set up, and they were fine. Oh, they let you do it. Yeah. Oh, so I did nice. this in two sessions. And the whole time I was doing it, there were people parking in that spot and mm -hmm. coming and going. That's the back entrance to a laundromat. Uh -huh. So they were going with baskets of clothes in and out and dogs walking by and skateboards. and. And I kept taking pictures of those, mm -hmm. some of those people, thinking that I would add them in. But in the end, when I was done, I just liked the simplicity and the, the sparseness of that, and so didn't add anything. So he said how he has the tailgate. But this is my favorite triangle right here. This one comes this way, and this comes that way. Uh, leads the eye in. Mm -hmm. oh, wow, I can really look at that. <laughs> yeah, you probably. I've talked with other painters. They don't, they don't think of that, but as artists or even even the viewer, they see those little things. But for the artists, they're just like, no, I'm just putting things down. You know, right. I mean, are you overthinking your painting? Not, I'm not saying overthinking them, but are you really thinking about the composition that much? No, or are you I'm just not. if it I, pleases you, you're ready to go. Yeah, I mean, I'll, I'll walk around with my viewfinder and try to figure something out mm -hmm. there, but. Um, how big is your viewfinder? Is it? Like... It's a pro the window is approximately four by five okay. inches or three say. by four inches. So it's a little bigger because I like to hold it away from my face. The small oh. ones I end up having so close that it's it's awkward. Yeah, it blurs blur the uh, edge. Yeah, 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 it gets all blurry at the edge. So yeah, you know, but um, so I don't, I don't do a whole lot of planning in the beginning but when i after i'm finished with the painting and i'm happy with it mm -hmm. i'll stare at it and try to analyze it and figure out what it is that i like about it so that's well, when I'm you analyze going. is it something that looks off or i mean do you like what's look do you tell yourself what looks off on it what's the, what's throwing my eye away from the center of interest or something uh, yeah yeah you know, i'm, I'm just troubleshooting trying if there's something i'm not a painting i'm not happy with i'm trying to figure out what it is and my, my thumb is my biggest problem solver. I'll oh, sit in my okay. chair at a distance and I'll cover stuff up. And if I cover something up and it improves the painting, then I feel like I've identified the problem. Right. It doesn't tell me what to do about it, but it identifies what, what's causing the problem. Do you have any advice on painting vehicles? Or do you see, you don't even see it as a vehicle? No. I, there, you know, it's no different than painting anything else. It's right. just, there's, it's just based on observation. There's no, I don't use any tricks about how to render them or how to start drawing it. Um, I prefer the old ones because they have more character. Right. But another thing I was trying to do with the, the paintings we looked at earlier was just paint some newer vehicles, the right. more generic ones that I don't have an emotional attachment to and try to make a painting that's pleasing that isn't relying on a beautiful old Vehicle. When I look at this painting, I thought it was off the block here at the VFW Hall. Oh, it looks just like this. I'm like, yeah, very yeah, similar. Yeah, you saw that, right? <laughs> yeah. Uh, and this is just the entry to laundromat. There's no it's windows. The back, back entrance to a laundromat. Right. Yeah. No and windows. I, and... I've used this blank wall as a backdrop for at least a dozen paintings. Oh, really? Oh, keeps paying off. Yeah. Yeah. I it, just, this is in your neighborhood. Yeah. Right? It's, so you... it's about four blocks from my house. Are most of your paintings from that area? Uh, no, 
I paint all, you know, I go into San Francisco, I go all over Marin County, Sonoma County, uh, sometimes up in the Sierras. I go to Maine every year. I'm from Ohio. My mom still lives there. I go, I paint in Ohio. So and you've been to Europe, right? Yeah. Yeah. And you painted what, Southern, was it Southern France you're in? Or? Yeah, I did a workshop a few years ago in, in Provence, and I taught in Italy two years ago, and I've taught in Mexico a couple of times, so. Yeah, well, that's what did you like about all those? Is it just the light, or the subject matter, or the way just, their cars look? Or? <laughs> I do like their cars in France. Yeah. Um, it's just fun to be somewhere new, where, you know, a lot of the stuff in Fairfax in my town I've seen it for 20 years, so you, you stop seeing it when you, you see it. Do the locals place. start to know who you are because they see you out there all the time? They did this summer, you yeah. know, because I, I didn't haven't done a lot of painting downtown. Uh -huh. But um, every time I set up, I was down there for at least two hours. And, and I did talk to, I met, I met a, a dozen people. Yeah, it was interesting. So, so um, how has COVID changed things for you? I know a lot of things got canceled and you're like, okay, I get to paint some of the things around the neighborhood. But uh, what about your, what you do in a day? Or, are you such It slowed deadlines. my pace down a little it, bit. It has. Cause, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Normally. No deadlines. I, I'm, and I'm, when I'm in full production mode, I'll uh -huh. probably do one and a half paintings a week, maybe wow. even two. Um, now these are more than just plein air paintings. Yeah, these are studio, studio paintings. Studio paintings. Yeah. So I just finished paintings as I said. <laughs> <laughs> so more, you know, like uh, eighteen by twenty-four, something yeah, like yeah. that. Um, so COVID, you know, slower pace, fewer deadlines. So mm -hmm. I've really enjoyed going out and and doing the more random scenes, mm -hmm. smaller stuff that I don't really feel a need to put in the galleries and try to sell. Mm -hmm. So it's been it's been interesting that way, and I feel like I've grown a little bit by doing, really? you know, by doing six months of more plein air painting or primarily plein air painting. It's also a nice change, and it's, you know, yeah, it's great. You start, you know, I, I went back to this paint. I just love these little warm so it's going cool, warm, warm here down to the coal. Look at that. There's even a little little bit of red there. Yeah, that's pretty neat to see. See, we're pretty lucky at Scottsdale Art School. We get all these instructors coming in and they bring samples of their paintings. I don't know if you brought any down with you, but uh, in his classroom upstairs, tomorrow when I'm back in, I'll go look at the live ones and I'll take some photos and uh, I'll get to enjoy them because I'm selfish that way. <laughs> all right, we'll go next. So this is another one. This is just 50 feet from where the last one was. The The red truck is just off uh, to the right. Is it a really small town or? Yeah. Okay. 7,000 people. So oh, okay. All right. It's pretty small. So this is, you know, when I walk downtown, this is the view where I'm entering the business district. So this is the front end of the laundromat and the hair salon. And so I did this on site. This is a small six by eight. Um, and I really like this scene because it, it feels recognizable, Fairfax. This is a little art deco detail that's just a, very conspicuous. And this piece right here is our local movie theater, which is also an art deco design. And it says Fairfax in neon letters. It's a beautiful building and it's our kind of our landmark of town. So I really want to go back. I'm planning to go back and do a bigger one on site where the theater is actually more recognizable. Mm. But I'm going to be um, particular about what car is parked there. I haven't decided what I'm going to do, but I know if I set up and paint for a few hours, the cars are going to come and go. Right. So I'm going to have to, you know, get a car and put it there and leave it there. So you're going to get a friend's car again, like you said. That's my okay, that's, thought, that's, yeah. Oh, that's great. There you go with the uh, painting on the, the crosswalks. Yeah, the yeah. cross. I love when you do that. Yeah. Yeah. You know how to, you do it enough. You don't overdo it. You know? <laughs> and as a former graphic designer, I, I love to paint things that has, that has large letters in it. So right. like when it says stop on the street, I love doing that. Or, I guess I'm into it because I have such a hard time with lettering uh, on signs when I put them in paintings. Like how do I, how much should I reduce the uh, details? All right. Or, everyone tells me just paint the negative shapes. And I'm like, oh. uh, yeah. <laughs> we'll see. But I, I'm loving these cool blues in here. Look at that. But I love these warm, warm, cool colors back here. It still pushes back. The edges are soft. It just goes right back. It's nice. Yeah, yeah. But uh, talk, we'll talk about signatures. I noticed you also color your signature. You don't use the same color every time, like the one with the chair. Mm -hmm. You had it in a different green. Is that just part of 
what you do? You try to make it harmonize with the banding? Yeah, generally, if it's in a light area, mm -hmm. I'll make my signature slightly lighter. Mm -hmm. oh. If it's in shadow, I'll make it slightly darker. That way I feel like it disappears so that you know, I, I don't want it. I don't want you to see it when you're looking at the painting, mm -hmm. only when you're, you want to see the signature. painting this is a studio painting what size do we get this is 12 by 19 okay so unusual size and this is a scene in door county and it's from a photo that i took several years ago during the door county planner festival and of course it was canceled this past right, year right. so it was a virtual event and this was my uh entry for the, for the virtual for the virtual show oh, nice. so yeah. So it was from life or from photos? From a photograph. From a photograph. Yeah. And there, there was another barn over here, I mm -hmm. think, that I got rid of. But everything else is as it was. Um, and I, I'm pretty happy with this painting. I like the truck barn combo. They're, they're very centered in the painting, and I don't do that very often. Um, but I feel like it's weighted a little bit on the right because you've got the light hitting the truck and the building from that side. There's a little pathway leading you back. Mm -hmm. And then there's this green shape that disappears behind the truck and reappears over there. And then this gold wedge also leads you over in that direction. Um, and I also like the cloud shape up there that oh, yeah. disappears behind the, the barn. Those so. amazing uh, soft edges. Uh, I did see a video where you, I guess you only use an eight. Is that you? No, or? that's not true. You go smaller I, than that, or six is my, six is the smallest. No, not six is not six is my primary. Oh, primary. Brush. That's your primary. Uh, I start every painting with probably a six, unless it's quite large, and mm -hmm. then I'll start with an eight. But I really don't go any smaller than a four. Right. So six, five, and four. What, what's the, the biggest painting you've ever worked on uh, recently? Did, recently? Yeah, in the last four or five years. Uh, thirty by forty. Thirty by forty. Nice. Did it involve a vehicle? I don't, I don't remember. I think it did. Yes, a rancher and an old truck. Yeah. Oh yeah, I saw some of those. I hopefully maybe yeah. some. Oh, here's a uh, water scene. This is California or that's Maine. Maine. Oh yeah. okay. So you go there once a year? About once a year to teach, teach. and or paint. Yep. Uh, are you inspired by all the painters that came from Maine and paint the boats or? No. You're doing your own thing. <laughs> I just. I just uh, like Tim. He's into his own thing. <laughs> I did listen to one podcast with you, and you're like, I stay away from people, <laughs> other artists. I got to do my own thing. And it, that's makes you an individual. It makes you it shows your creativity. Yeah, and I mean, it's not it's that great I'm, advice. I'm not aware of the, all the painters, yeah. the, the tradition in Maine, but um, I I'm really drawn to the classic architecture in Maine. Mm -hmm. Just all those beautiful houses. And then when you're on the coast, on the edge of the the, the land. You get a view of the water and there's these islands back there mm -hmm. and so if i can combine an old house and the water and an island and a lobster boat i mean that's just a it's wonderful heavy. day yeah and i like i like the lobster boats in particular as opposed to where i am the marinas are usually full of sailboats mm -hmm. and they're all white and with silver masts and they're all jammed together and so that i i'm not inspired to paint right but up in Maine with these lobster bite boats, first of all, the shapes I think are more interesting and, and simpler and they're on moorings. So there's space around them right. and they're different colors. So you get this random patterning of patterning of boats and uh, I love lobster this, boats. Is this a big painting? It looks big. It's I think it's 16 by 20. Oh, okay, it even so, looks bigger than that, like 32 by... Uh, yeah. I'm thinking of doing a larger version. I, I really like doing this one a lot. This is a little bit more unusual for me, and I loved it so much I was thinking I might do a 30 by 40. Maybe because that. it's the clouds and things are separated that it looks like it's expanding. And, yeah, it's got kind of a expanding. different scale to it. Yeah. yeah. That's just amazing. Yeah, beautiful. Look at this. The negative shapes the sky goes. Whoa. So this is another in my shadow selfie series. Yeah. So I was with my son on a college tour, and we were doing Montana and 
those other states up there, <laughs> Washington and yeah. Idaho. And we were driving along and I saw this old truck and we flew past at 60 miles an hour and I had to just turn around, turn around. and go back and took a bunch of photos and ended up doing two paintings of it. Um, and so this was, the other one was not a, a shadow selfie, it was just the truck in the context of the field. Um, and people seem to like the shadow selfies when there's more than one image of me. So right. in this one, there's two images, a little reflection up in the window. Yeah. And I've done another one where there's the shadow and then there's a reflection in the, the paint. And then there's another reflection in the moon hubcap down below. So there's actually three images in there. You know, you're, you're wearing kind of like a fedora hat. It kind of goes with that period. It does, you know, yeah. With the, with the period <laughs> of the truck. But yeah, that's just amazing. I mean, uh, just these edges in here, and the, the values and the temperatures are blowing my mind. And then you got the halo effect around there. I, I'm not sure what they call that, but the little red. Yeah, I'm not sure what yeah, that is either. You know, it just loves it worse. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, there's a few times where I've I've seen something I want to take a photo of, and I end up taking a photo of my shadow on the truck. But if I don't have my hat from my, I'll shoot it anyway. Mm -hmm. And the hat shape is simple enough that I can you, you add can that in yeah. later. Yeah, yeah, from other. So other going back to you drove past it and you came back. Yeah. I mean, we, we get we're getting a lot of people who are beginners to me watching us, and uh, students of Scottsdale, and uh, just let them know. Got to go out of your way to get that reference. We talked about it the last interview we had. Mm -hmm. You really just got to go out and get yeah. it your own. Yeah. And the one thing I have learned is, you know, if I if I was driving by this and I saw that and I immediately thought, oh, that's perfect. It's just great, right like that. I have, I have mm -hmm. since learned that it's really important to walk all around your subject, see it from every angle, near and far and you will undoubtedly find another view that you like as much or more than that first one really? you saw. Okay. It, it's, I've always, I've yeah. learned that. Do you definitely. crop in or you just take a photo from farther back or do you get close and take a bunch of different photos? Yeah, I'll, I'll go, come close and, and far. I, I usually don't do a whole lot of crop. crop Are you using more than a, an iPhone or? You know, in the last, couple of years I've gotten lazy and I am using mostly my iPhone but I don't like the distortion that mm -hmm. comes from that lens um, so that's why I like my bigger camera for that reason so it's it's a constant struggle I'm looking forward to upgrading my iPhone mm -hmm. where it has those three lenses and oh yeah yeah so that'll that work that'll be my wife has it I just borrow, borrow hers oh. if she's my son this. has it I borrow his <laughs> I just I love this painting. It's just it's simple, but it's not. You know, when you look around, I mean, just just the way these values are so close to the background, but yet the temperature pulls you forward on mm -hmm. some of the edges. Yeah, you know, one challenging aspect of these selfie uh, paintings is because the sun is right behind me. Mm -hmm. There are often very few shadows in there. Mm -hmm. So, for example, the all of the truck material is all in sun, and it's right. all got intense light on it. So it's only this little split here and the little wheel well here and a little behind the, the turn signal that I get some some relief from that that value in there. So it's that can be a challenge. Do you use Photoshop at all or any type of uh, program to manipulate your photos? I do use Photoshop, but I do very little manipulation. You know, I the only thing I might do in a situation like this is if I had taken a photo from further back mm -hmm. and I decided I wanted more space over here, I might look into one of those photos and uh, grab some of that background so I can add some more, you know, a couple more inches of right. image area on the side. But I, I don't change colors or do a whole lot of manipulation in Photoshop at all. Just reaching for or researching your work, uh, you're, you're prolific with the painting. I mean, you do a lot of paintings, but do you, do you ever have any problems painting or do you have any dogs or do you just oh, say, let me just correct them and you just take oh, your yeah. time to correct them? My studio is full of mediocre paintings. All right. So when I'm out there working on a painting and I'm not thrilled with it, mm -hmm. I'm willing to risk it all in trying to make it better or fix mm -hmm. it. And if it doesn't work, then fine. It's, it's another painting that I just scrape out and, and, and salvage the canvas. So I've, 
Uh, and plein air painting for me is more challenging. Mm -hmm. I get my success rate is a lot lower when I paint outside. Uh, in the studio, I've got, um, I feel pretty confident that most of the time I'm able to solve it and, and make it work. But in this, when I go out and paint, do a plein air, I just assume I'm going to do a, a failed painting most of the time. And that kind of reduces the pressure on me, uh -huh. lowers the bar. And so I just go out and try to enjoy the day. And uh, every now and then I, I get one that I'm really happy with. Okay. And so that's, that's thrilling. So you take the pressure off yourself. Exactly. You yeah. Just go perform and you do fantastic. Yep. Yeah, that's exactly. great. One. Oh, I like looking at this one. Just the colors, the vibration. It's really nice. I'll go to another painting here. Oh, it's a little smaller. You want to do that one or we go to this one here? Either one. So this is a, a farm in my hometown in Ohio. Mm -hmm. And uh, you may recognize the truck. That's the same one that was in front of the laundromat. Mm -hmm. So I did the painting of the barn and everything else, but I felt like it needed another element. So I added the truck from a different photo. And so this is, uh, I put this in the category of my sun flare paintings where you're looking into the sun. So I've done a number of those and I find that uh, a fun challenge. And I, yeah, I love how this is painted. It's how it, it's, it doesn't look flat, but it's painted flatly, but you use the shadows to show the form. Yeah, it costs them. Right. And even though this green may have appeared fairly uniform from mm -hmm. top to bottom, I sometimes darken it toward the, as the near foreground to yeah. just try to make it add some variation in there. And so we're looking into the sun in this painting. That's amazing. And in California, I don't, I don't mean to complain, but our, we get a lot of clear blue skies, right, right. and sometimes those are a little boring to right. paint. So I love having clouds to help me right, break up right. the shape of that sky. Are those the clouds that were there, or did you move them around? Those were the clouds that were, that were there. And yeah. This is a studio painting, though, right? It is a yeah. studio painting, yeah. I did teach a workshop on this mm -hmm. particular farm, but that was a studio painting. So the workshop, were you guys staying in that location or you guys would drive there? Or? No, this is a farm that we got permission to uh, to visit. It's mm -hmm. part of this uh, green belt around town. I noticed you were outside with your workshop today. Yes. Um, and, you, and you also do the blocks? Uh, yeah, that's, that's blocks. our first exercise. We mm -hmm. focus on values a lot. So I bring in my blocks that I made, different colored blocks. Mm -hmm. And we paint those from life in natural light when possible. It was cloudy Monday, so we worked inside. Um, but that really just, um, people, I tell them not to get concerned about the drawing or the composition. Mm -hmm. I just want to focus on the colors and the values. So you get a light side and the shadow side mm -hmm. and just get that, that, that combination. Is that a henchy thing? Because uh, we have other teachers that come here and they use the blocks and they're, they're got that henchy background. Yeah. I'm not a henchy follower. I don't know much about his thing. I know he did blocks a lot, but my approach is not the henchy approach. You just want to teach values. I just, it's just a simple form that has a clear separation of, of light and shadow. The, the reason I like to teach uh, using structures as a subject matter is there is a clear separation of light and shadow. Mm -hmm. If you take beginning students out into the landscape, and you have them paint trees and shrubs, that's a, a real challenge to mm -hmm. try to see that transition from light to shadow. And so I find that with something like blocks or a, a barn, it's very clear. There's light on one side and shadow on the other side. So it's, it's easier to break that down and simplify those values. What's the one question you hear from all your students every workshop, is there something? <sighs> Boy. I, I you you stumped me there. I I can't think of. There's nothing you hear all the time. Like, what um, color did you mix for a tree? Or yeah, I get that a lot. You know, I'll be in the middle of a painting, mm -hmm. painting furiously, and they'll ask me, "What color did you use for that?" And a lot of times, I can't even answer that. You know, it's yeah. just my palette is a mess. I, it's not a terribly organized thing, mm -hmm. so I'm just grabbing what's there and just pulling stuff in and out. So I can't I can't often answer that question. Ooh, here's another one looking into the sun. It's yep, setting another, a little bit, right? Another sun flare. This is a, a studio painting. This is very recent. This is just a couple of weeks ago. So, um, 
So the challenge in this one is that there was light behind the buildings mm -hmm. and they're in shadow, but then the light comes back in inside this whole shadow area in the foreground. So that was a, that was yeah, a that's great temperatures. Right. Just a little bit warmth here. Same yeah. value, but this is warmer, that's cooler. Yeah. And so I had, I had been at this barn the week before mm -hmm. with my class, uh, painting it from life, plein air class. And so I stayed late until the sun went down and took some photos. And you can that. see the d different levels of value and temperature change here. Yeah. Yeah. Now with you, I noticed a lot of wires, electrical wires. Are you using a knife or are you using your brush? I uh, usually my dr my brush. I'll really? put them in with a you know like a number four, mm -hmm. and then I'll come around with the color that surrounds it and carve yeah. into it and make them skinnier and skinnier and disappear. In do you use any knife at all? Or? I do use a knife, but not very often, and it's really only in, in the last five years or so that I've started to use it. But I don't think I used it at all in this painting. Yeah, that was a shame. Beautiful. Thanks. Wow. So this, yeah, I'm, I'm lettering. Happy with this one. Yeah, big lettering is. It says uh, launch for hire. This is about an hour from my house, mm -hmm. 45 minutes. And uh, I was set up right on the side of the road, so there was only five feet between me and traffic rushing by. So I had my traffic cones and my white shirt to try to make myself visible but I and I did this in two sessions uh, this summer um, but really happy with this painting the tide was a little higher on one day than the other but I had most of it blocked mm -hmm. in by then and you know with my experience in graphic design I could easily with a small brush make that lettering perfect mm -hmm. but that to me that would be stylistically inconsistent right. with the rest of the painting so that's why I paint it loose intentionally. I want it to look like the rest of the painting was handled and not necessarily legible. I like the little warmth right there. I'm just studying it. I'm just, I, I love how, you know, water sits flat, but these really look like you're sitting flat. And they're just such big graphic shapes mm -hmm. in here. These are really great. Yeah, water is fun because it's, it's abstract, you know? It's mm -hmm. not like you're trying to convey uh, the form of a structure is just areas of light and areas of color and it gives you more freedom to to mess around with those shapes do you feel you're just a sh not just but you're mostly a shape painter uh yeah i'm definitely a shape, painter. A shape painter and and i prefer to paint structures you know cars and buildings but i have uh, in recent years i've been pushing myself to do more pure landscapes so that i find that a little more challenging especially to establish a focal point in a pure landscape but so i've been trying you've to touched that. on the figure i've seen some paintings that you yeah did. not, that not that's definitely not my comfort zone mm -hmm. but i occasionally put a human in there yep so this i did in maine this summer um from life on monhegan island there's this woman who runs a b and b and she put up this was her laundry mm -hmm. and i think it was painter bait i think she <laughs> was luring painters over there because when she saw me painting she was very excited uh -huh. and i came back in, laundry every time i came back the next day and the same laundry was there <laughs> so i think it's a trap <laughs> that's awesome just do a painting on one of the sheets <laughs> but I, I did this painting from life and i was very happy with it and uh, i took a bunch of photos while i was there and then i did a larger studio painting different view without this building in there was also so this is what size though this i think is 11 by 14, 11 by 14. and the other one i think was 18 by 24. i love how flat you made the water kind of it kind of works against everything else works with it but it's just mm -hmm. the opposite of all this movement coming in and out the texture yeah that's really nice yeah laundry laundry's fun that's another thing i do with my students is we focus on translucency mm -hmm. And so we do backlit citrus and backlit laundry. And it's it's very fun. Because, oh, in the workshop here? Yeah. So you set up laundry outside? Yeah, I bring my, oh, wow. my 50 foot clothesline from home. <laughs> and then- Is that tomorrow or you did it right? uh, Maybe tomorrow, I'm not sure. I'll have to come tomorrow. out there and take some photos of that. And the school has so much, uh, you know, fabric right. and wardrobe and thing that 
I can dig through there and find some colors and I brought clothespins with me and I just hang, stretch a, a line between the palm trees and set up laundry. Laundry bait. Yep. <laughs> That's awesome. Oh, we saw that one. Oh, this is nice. So this is another plein air painting. This is about half an hour from my house. So this was another very busy road. So I, I had trouble getting off and had my traffic cones and I was going to ask you that. Say, <laughs> I, those, I, you're, you're almost in the street here. It's very, yeah. yeah. And when there's a break in traffic, sometimes I run out and take a photo, but this is a steep downhill. Mm -hmm. So cars really go fast here. So I did this in one session, uh, plein air. This is nine by 12. Mm -hmm. Now were all these vertical poles at those angles or do you kind of I like think it? I tweaked one yeah, of them your, because they were all leaning the same direction yeah. so I wanted to throw that off a little bit and I have painted this once from life before and once from a photograph before but this for this one I was trying a new site size mm -hmm. method and so this was my first attempt oh really you're doing site size yeah were you doing was it strictly site size or were you doing also shape to shape did you start like here or or how did you do? How did you do your? Site I don't size have any formal training in these yeah. site size, so I have one of the frames from Joseph McGurl where you clamp it onto your oh, yeah. easel where it is absolutely right next Even. to your canvas. Yeah. And it's the exact. It's a nine by twelve opening, and there are strings across it to make a little grid. And so you just you know you're locked into your standing position, mm -hmm. and you look through the frame, and you look at your canvas. And you just it helps with the drawing it's right. a it's a drawing tool it helps you helps you get those so it's shapes. more drawing than values or colors it's or only drawing oh really I, only drawing. I think i mean yeah. again i don't have any formal training in that mm -hmm. oh that's kind of that was, that's kind of fun yeah was, that. Good. was that was that something you do now you still do or was it just an experiment i've only done it a couple times it felt a little uh restrictive yeah. to me it's like having to be a little more careful I mean it definitely helped me with the accuracy of the drawing and I appreciated it for that I think it would for me it would be more useful when if I were doing some building some architecture where it would help me get those perspective lines and things that's sweet you know uh, a lot of students would look at this and they would want to paint something like this just so they could put these verticals at different angles it's just like I gotta try that one yeah. day you know see if I can get that yeah. Awesome. Oh, here we go. Here's some people. Yeah, there's. Some I, people. I love your people, though. I mean, I like Thanks. the woman on the horse. Uh, oh, you've yeah. done some of your son, and mm -hmm. uh, it's because of you knowing light and the temperatures and the reflected light. It's just amazing. And these, it's kind of this is kind of uh, reminiscent of like a, a was it Homer? Yeah, it yeah. does feel a little yeah. Homer-esque to me. That. So this was a scene in Cuba. I went down there in 2016. And uh, this was from a photo that I took when I was down there. And um, was that for vacation or? No, um, I had wanted to go myself mm -hmm. uh, for years, and it just felt unaffordable. So I ended up putting together my own group. Oh, nice! And yeah. so I just invited all my friends, my painter friends, yeah. and uh, put together a group of, I think it was nineteen of us. Oh, really? And uh, it was great it was so much did fun. you go to the museum the art museum in havana yes and, and they still have I, I went there for my bachelor party about 20 years oh really <laughs> wow but uh <laughs> i went for the sorayas you know bachelor yeah. parties are for your friends but uh uh they you could see the evolution from him going academic to the sun paintings mm -hmm. the way they had it designed mm -hmm. i mean they could have changed it by the time you were then i know people were suing him for the paintings also oh really to get them back oh, but they said really? you lost it through war or something uh, so you don't get it yeah, we had no idea that there were sororities there until we went into the museum, really? and we oh, were yeah. thrilled to find it. I think there we were about seven of them there. So the only reason seven. I knew is someone traded me a painting for a sor a, a sorio book. It was, oh. it was from Spain, but it was about Soria's collection in Cuba. Oh, okay. Huh. That were lost to huh. by Spanish Spaniards who lived in Cuba. Yeah. Yeah, it's a beautiful place to paint. Yes, you know. it is. It old is. cars. Yeah, there's a big, few old big cars. Uh, <laughs> rims and yeah. What do you call the part over the tire? The uh, fenders, the fender fenders. fenders. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah, that was that was a beautiful place. Yeah, you know. And how long ago was that? 2016. 2016. Oh, okay. So that's a different cube. I'm, I'm planning yeah. to go back at some point. Oh, that's good. Yeah. Well, if you're taking a group, let me know. Okay. <laughs>
How's your Spanish? Pretty good, right? Not good. Not good at all. It's Cuban Spanish. Speak fast. But... <laughs> <laughs> so this is a, another scene in my hometown in Ohio. So this is just, this is a country road that I've driven down hundreds of times, but the first time I've ever painted it. Uh, so I just started doing paintings of Ohio maybe five years ago. Mm -hmm. And it's been really fun to, to paint it. It feels so comfortable. I'm just so familiar with that landscape that it, it feels, I don't know, comfortable, part of me. And painting corn in particular is really fun because, you know, when you grow up there, you're familiar with all the phases of corn mm -hmm. from the bare ground to the little seedlings coming up to knee high, bright green, to then the, the taller than you are, six, seven feet tall, and then the harvest gold color, and, and then the little stubble poking up through the snow in winter. It's really an interesting. So this is that part after? Of the, that's, I think that's after the harvest. That's probably, I'm guessing, September or something before they cut it down, but after. The, Do you like corn? Corn's good, yeah. <laughs> Just amazing. Uh, I've been studying your brush strokes. I'm like, okay. And now that I know you use the bristles, I see it. I see the thin and thick. You're not using uh, sable or synthetic. No, yeah. no. I mean, I do thing. have a few mm -hmm. synthetics, but I don't use them very often because I find that it, it gives me too much control. And I want to, I mean, that's why I stay with large brushes. I want to take away some of that control. And if I use, those synthetics it's i know i can get a sharp point and a thin line right, right, right. and that's just too much and, and all my tight my paintings would get tighter and tighter right, right. and that's not the direction now if know. you're doing detail do you try to stay as big as you can with detail yeah. just and if you can't do it then you might move to a smaller brush yeah you're six or four yeah, a tiny little four. Do you so you don't use any rounds just because you don't want you know? Because I'm I'm still amazed that you're using a four on some of this stuff. Yeah, yeah. these wires. And you know I I may have put in that pole with a knife. Mm -hmm. I'm just you know I'm starting to do that a little bit more, but it's still pretty rare. So. And I love how you simplify these trees. The plane change, the light and the shadow. Mm -hmm. There's the plane change right there. That's awesome. That's sweet. There's a lot of love here. That's where you grew up, huh? Yeah. 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 yeah it does. Did you cry home. when you were I did. Oh, back home. Yes, it was terrible. <laughs> oh, there's a. Oh, there's there's another. Yeah, this is the oh, one man. that uh, has the three images in it. The reflection, or no, the shadow, the cast mm -hmm. shadow, and my reflection in the chrome, and then there's another reflection in the. Oh, I see it right here. Paint. Yeah, very faint. I'll outline it up. <laughs> When, when uh, I start doing the editing, that's awesome. But this is this was a situation where I mentioned how it's difficult because there's no shadow, very right. few shadows. So all of this, everything else, there are no shadow shapes at all. It's just in that wheel well that you get some darks in there. So it's, it can be challenging. Do you that. look look at all at uh, uh, Norman Rockwell's later paintings? No, not not at all. Because I, I see. It, I see some of the flatness that he does, you know, huh. oh. and it brings out for you to get depth. He like uses that to bring out some of the other parts of that flatness. So this is kind of pushing back there, but this is showing all the form here, which is hmm. interesting. It's almost like an abstract painting here too. Yeah, it does get a little abstract when yeah. you, you crop in and the shapes get big and go off the edge. It does get a little abstract, and I like the the strong color. You know, so much strong color. They, that blue covers like fifty percent of the canvas. Oh yeah, that's kind of fun. I just sold that last week. Congrats! I love this. This is all. They're the same colors, aren't they? It's kind of the same values. They're, that's background and that's yep. van, but and, it's. And that's the laundromat again. Oh right yeah, there. yeah, yeah. But these, these, uh, the scenes from the doors, those are what's keeping our eye from being, yeah, yeah. From making it look like the van. That's pretty yeah. sweet. Boy, this is some. Uh, this is an art lesson today for me. Let's go back to your figures. You haven't been doing any figures recently, or you had your, you had like a, a series of paintings that were figures. No, I, I just like, occasionally uh, do one. Right. Uh, you know I I took a workshop with Peggy Kroll years ago and I love that because her her approach is, is a fairly simplified clear right. approach to the figure and that allowed me to 
introduce the figure into the landscape. You know, this is a perfect example of that where, you know, I don't, I don't need any anatomy lessons to do these figures. I just, it's more about value and just getting those, including those shapes and those elements in the, in the painting. And you see the planes, this parts of the light, this parts of the shadow. Yeah. Just like with the blocks, yep. you know. Yeah. And it looks like a figure. Yeah, but I, you know, I don't do really portraits of people very yeah. often, and that's that's. But you could. I mean, you know, it's, you did your son. It's a likeness. It's right? painful. It's, it's consistently. It's not uh, my comfort zone. Yeah. It's, and and I do resort to smaller brushes and synthetics. Hey, get it done, right? It's it's, it's from doing commercial work. <laughs> get it done. <laughs> that's awesome. Well, Tim, thanks. Thanks for coming. Thanks for coming to Scottsdale Art Thanks for having me. We love having you every year. And the students, I talk to them, and they're just ecstatic, and uh, they love your work. And, uh, and just I, to see this brightness here is amazing. Of, you know, and I love teaching at the school every yeah. year. It's a, such a great facility and such a such great energy in the school with all the students running around and the different classes going on. It's just it's a wonderful place. I'm so happy to be a part of it. Well, thanks, guys. Thanks, Tim, again, and just remember, uh, contact the school. Uh, ask for our local catalog or the catalog for our workshops, or you can go online. We also have online courses. They're fantastic, and maybe get Tim to do an online class. Speaking to the producers back there, and uh, <laughs> we'll see. All right, thanks, guys. Have a good one.